Welcome back, everyone. We're continuing to support those who want to pursue meaningful, long-term relationships. In today's video, we're talking to an intentional single who will do a self-pitch. Keep watching to learn more about this eligible single. If you are also single, intentional, and believe you may be a good match, please reach out to them directly. Where are you calling from? Tucson, Arizona. It's beautiful, sunny. We're going to have low 80s today, a little breezy. Jealous. Nice, nice. I grew up in Missouri. Oh, really? Okay, not too far. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, I'm a Midwest girl. Okay, great, great. That's good. And uh, what is your age? Uh, 49. I'll be 50 in May. Okay, nice. Uh, do you have like a particular age range that you're looking for or are you just kind of open? I mean, I... I don't want to go too young. I think probably 42, 43 would be the youngest I would be okay. interested in dating. Um, and the same kind of goes in the opposite direction. So probably 57, 58. Okay. So we'll say I'm a, I'm a young, like I went out on a date with a guy last week and cause I was still trying the whole internet crap. Yeah. Um, and everything was great. We were really compatible. But after sitting down for an hour, we went to get up and he stood up like a 70 year old man. And I'm like, wow. try and keep up with me. <laughs> like, there is no way. If you're 60 and that's your mentality, this yeah. is never going to work. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, I've been a relationship coach for five years. Yeah. So, like, I kind of feel like it's ruined me for dating. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I'm not going to settle. I left a very abusive marriage, 21, uh, 21 year marriage four years ago. I've done a ton of work, trauma work to put myself back together, right. weave me back together. And I've worked with women in complex PTSD that have partners that are at, at minimal sex addicts and, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere on the narcissist psychopath scale for five years. So it's taking me a lot of time to be able to trust myself mm -hmm. and not be angry with men, yeah. but be here and present and open to the masculine and ready to honor that and be honored by the masculine. Right. Um, if that makes sense. I don't even want to date somebody that has a porn habit. Yeah. And that's not being picky. That's protecting myself. Yeah. My ex-husband became violent in the bedroom the more mm. he got wrapped up in those types of things. Mm. And I became physically abused because of it. So mm. I talked to two of my friends and they're like, no way in hell would I pitch you. Mm. How am I supposed to know after what you have lived through yeah. what you are looking for in a man? Yeah. It feels like you're coming to the table with the expectation that they also have done their work and they're open to yeah. see what work together looks like too. I'm not looking for a project. I'm looking for a partner, an equal partner, Yeah. not somebody that wants to own me, mm -hmm. but someone that wants to stand beside me and be an equal partner. And I thought I had that. What I had was someone that was just lying to me about that. Mm. Um, and then just, you know, stomping all over any commitments we really had, like he was never faithful and 17 years in, he just started confessing a bunch of things. And it was like, oh. whoa, like you're never the person I thought you were. Mm -hmm. So it has taken a lot to be able to trust. I've just learned a lot and, you know, have created a lot of space for women to be able to come in and reclaim those lost parts of self. Mm -hmm. Um, because I've had amazing women who've gone before me help me do the same thing. Yeah. And I'm still on that journey. I mean, I think it's a lifelong process of learning and yeah. growth and uncovering. So well said. Yeah, definitely. Thank I you. like that. And we appreciate you sharing that as well. And so just from kind of going back, it sounds like your age range would be somewhere between uh, 42 to 58. We, we yeah. can agree on that. Sounds that feels like age appropriate to me. Okay. Okay, yeah. so we'll go with that, uh, Carrie. Um, what do you do for a living? What is it? So I have actually pushed pause on all of the mental health stuff just because I've been doing it on Zoom from home since April of 2019, a year before the pandemic. And it was really isolating and really trauma-inducing, quite frankly, after almost five years. So was looking for like an entry-level mental health position and I got in touch with an old boss in the mortgage industry from 17 years ago 
And to make a very long story short, he created a position for me. I'm helping him run his mortgage company in Texas. So I have a, a mortgage license in Texas, even though I live in Arizona. Okay. Um, I can I can be anywhere. So I build and run mortgage companies during the day, but my heart and my passion is transformational breath work and working with women in that soul reclamation process. So are you legally single? Oh, absolutely. I've been divorced. My divorce will be three years old next week, April okay. 5th. Okay. And, and it's sad we have to ask that, but mm. we, we appreciate that because it is, it sets the foundation for, are you ready for what's next? Mm -hmm. um, do you and I've had a, I've had about a year and a half long relationship within that four years of being single, reconnected with a lifelong friend I've known my whole life. And sadly put him in rehab a year and a half ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, I can't keep breaking up with you long distance. Like it's been too long. So yeah. And do you have any children? I have two boys, but they're both grown. I'm an empty nester and I can travel full time with my job. So I own my house free and clear. I'm debt free. Okay. I make amazing money. I do awesome breath work on my own. You know, I don't have to worry about the stress of carrying a practice anymore. And I'm just really, I need a big spoon two or three nights a week, you know, and that's where I'd like to start. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But give us more on that because that transitions mm -hmm. into what makes you an intentional dater. I think you spoke to that. Um, what about, what are you looking for in the, in the, in a partner? What are some value pieces you look for? Hmm. Okay. I need somebody that's really open-minded and not threat. I need to be with somebody that is liberal, that is open-minded, that understands I have a gay son who I love more than anything. No, I wouldn't be with somebody that's conservative, closed-minded. It's just, that's not going to be a good fit for me. Yeah. Or that, somebody that has a lot of sexual shame. Mm -hmm. Like I've trained next to erotic blueprint coaches for over five years at this point. There's no sexual shame left in me. If somebody is, you know, has hangups in that area. Like that's also, you know, or somebody is super religious. That's also not going to be a good fit. My mom's ordained. Mm -hmm. I was very spiritually abused as a kid. I'm very respectful of people's religious beliefs and values. What would it look like if someone were open to um, exploring life with you and they really didn't know how, like they had this openness toward, um, what life looks like, but they didn't know how to cultivate that. Maybe they came out of a super um, conservative background yeah. and mm -hmm. maybe that's still where they are, but mm -hmm. they're also open to seeing, you know, the church is you and you're supposed mm -hmm. to love. Absolutely. I mean, I have a pagan altar right behind me mm -hmm. and I sit at it and I read affirmations and I have prayer time every day. I went to the meditation center. My youngest went to a large mega church. Um, my oldest was gay and went to a church with a gay youth group director. So we all had different spiritual needs and went in different directions every Sunday. So we didn't have that tradition. Uh, would you be open to dating someone in another state or maybe out of the country? I'm not sure. Yeah. So the the friend, the lifelong friend that I dated for a year and a half was actually um, worked for uh, Molson Coors and was mm -hmm. traveling, but also was moved from Denver to Kansas City to Milwaukee the year and a half that we were dating. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, our thing, I told him, I said, like, because it just kind of happened that we started having feelings for each other, you know, and we'd just been friends our whole life. So I was, I was like, I know you're getting ready to move to Milwaukee and start a life there. And I would never want to hinder that or detract from your life, mm -hmm. but I'm having feelings. I'm wondering what could we co-create together that works for both of us. And if we're going to spend time together, like quality time. Um, and is not my love language, quality connection and presence is. So what do you consider your ideal first day? Um, being somewhere where we can sit and connect and talk and hear each other and not be distracted by loud music or a, a screen, you know, TV screens or, you know, just the noises around us. I have a hard time hearing sometimes when there's a lot of background noise. Okay. So... Right, and what are your uh, favorite attributes about yourself? Like one non-physical and one physical that you would say. Um, I'm very comfortable in my own skin and I know exactly who I am. Um, 
That's a big one. Yeah. So good non-physical. And, and what about physical, you would say? Um, I mean, I'm an ex-athlete, so I'm not, I'm about 10 to 15 pounds away from where I would be ecstatic and I'm taking steps to get there. Um, but I'm going to be 50 and fabulous in May. And that's my goal. Curious if there was anything else you wanted to to mention about yourself mm-hmm. that you felt was important. I mean, I just, I have really good values and I'm a person that stays in integrity even when it hurts. So like, I will do the right thing even when it's painful. Mm-hmm. That's big. Okay. Yeah. And then the connection, we need to find out how to best connect with you. Do you have an email address or a social media Instagram, uh, Facebook, what what would be your best way uh, for this intentional gentleman uh, that we would like Mm. to hope to send your way? um, And uh, Mm. so that way they'll be to see you and be like, hey, this is the woman I've been looking for all my life. Like what would be a great way for that particular gentleman uh, to reach out to you, Carrie? Probably my email address that you have, because I check that every day. And I'm not, I'm really trying to be intentional and not be on social media. Okay. And if you don't mind giving your email address for, just say it, what, what it is. Uh, C-K-U-B-E-7-4 at Gmail. Perfect. That sounds great. Thank you. All right. You. It was nice meeting you, Carrie. Thank you, you too. Tom. All right. Bye. Bye. If you or someone you know might be a great match for this eligible single, connect via the information they provided. If you're interested in being featured yourself, sign up using the link provided in the description box. Tune in next Saturday for our new video. Be sure to like, comment, and and subscribe. subscribe.